I'd like to welcome Na Peng Lu, Steve Lopez, Tim Allen, who all visited um, China with me. Uh, they've been up here in Hong Kong now for about a week, but uh, we're putting on a show for them uh, called Peaks and Valleys, uh, because I think that very much defines the landscape that we saw when we went to Huangsheng. Tim, of course, you were with me on an earlier trip that we took to Chiang Chai Jie, which was also very much peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. And both landscapes were absolutely breathtaking. Da Peng uh, was born in Beijing and uh, has spent uh, the last decade or so since 2007 in Australia. But I must say it was terrific having you with us because uh, you were able to deal with some of the translation issues while we were up at Huang Shen. Steve, your background is Italian and Sicilian, which has in fact had a wonderful meal that you've cooked, and I think that sort of very much defines a part of your person in that uh, you're, you're a man of many talents, including culinary talents. You had been in China before, uh, but this was the first time that you'd gone to Huangshan. Yeah. Let me start off perhaps by asking Tim how you think this trip and the experience you've had in China, as well as a little bit of Hong Kong, yeah. has influenced your painting, and then we'll perhaps move on and go around asking each of you the same question? Well, I, I think it's a, an ongoing process. I mean, in, in some ways, the, the really interesting thing is what happens in a year or two's time back in Australia and taking all the stuff that's clearly happened, or I think has happened in my work, and I'm sure the other guys as well, um, with this experience in China and seeing how that feeds back into an ongoing process of, of your painting. But I found both Zhang Zhejie and Huang Shan incredible experiences, very much one building on the other. Quite different landscapes, um, one sandstone, one granite, quite different shapes, but obviously some commonalities that, that set them apart from anything in Australia. But you uh, live in the Blue Mountains, mm, mm. and you have the Three Sisters, which are very unique uh, shapes in Australian uh, landscape terms. That's right. And I remember you saying that uh, you mm. saw similarities in what you were seeing. Well, I got, a, I got a shock, actually, when we went to the museum, and I'd been, we'd been walking all day looking at these formations, and I was thinking, I recognise them, I recognise them. They're, they're the same sandstone as I know intimately from rock climbing and living there for 15 years in the Blue Mountains. And then when we went to the museum and it was explaining some of the geology, I understood that it's exactly the same sandstone as the Blue Mountains, but capped um, with, with basalt top and bottom to kind of hold it together, which made the flues much greater without toppling over. And um, there, was this, there was this moment when the landscape is so, I described it to my kids as a Dr. Zeus landscape, like so impossibly almost surreal. And, and in a way, quite hard to get into artistically. And there was this funny moment when I'm realizing it's very familiar close up to the Blue Mountains. And I was almost disappointed. You know, I, I see this every day. And then I went, you idiot. Like, that's your way in. Like, that's the, you know, you need some sense of being able to understand it. So that was quite a nice um, uh, initial way in. But really building on everything we did, and Michael, you worked incredibly hard in St. Joe as well, working all through the mist there. We've got some fantastic memories of, of um, working in the rain and the mist and moving around from uh, six or seven stories up a pagoda and in complete whiteout and then a little bit of a, a crag and a verge, 180 degrees around the other side. We'd yell out and we'd all pack our stuff out and run around and find, paint that for 10 minutes. So challenging there as well as rewarding, but I, I really found all of that experience as soon as we got to Huangshan, even catching the cable car up. It was quite a different landscape, but something about all that previous experience, I was just looking outside, catching the cable car, thinking, I've, I've got a way in. I, I, it's going to work. I, I understand it now. Yeah, so it was, it was great. But building on the same country. Steve, you had a couple of artist residences, I think, in Beijing mm. and uh, up in northern China. So China wasn't a complete surprise for you. No, I'd spent uh, a lot of time in the, in the city. Um, and even coming to Hong Kong here for the first time, it was it sort of felt familiar. And but I really enjoyed the chance to go and you know spend time at the peaks and um, in those mountains. It was really um, 
I'd seen a lot of stuff in the, in the museums in Beijing of the great ink and uh, wash painters. And I thought that a lot of that might have been a little bit um, taken you know, with imagination or sort of worked upon by the masters. But when we got there, I was absolutely astounded that that's exactly what they saw, that there wasn't any exaggeration. And so I'd never seen a landscape like that before. And I've painted in a, a lot around Australia in a lot of deserty areas. I've, we've even painted together um, with Tim and yourself in, uh, in the central, you know, Australia and in Turkey. Lara Pinta. Lara Pinta. Yeah. yeah. And it's quite dry and harsh. But, and Gallipoli. It was fa that was a fantastic trip too to sort of um, uh, see the history behind the landscape. But for here, there was like real ancient history, which we had to sort of, how are we going to improve on that or do something different? So I, I felt that sort of my practice of working out in the landscape, um, you know, plain air, I could bring something maybe a little bit more Western to it, to a degree, working um, really instinctive and using colour, uh, the tonal ranges, which I, I like to use. But I think it really forced me to think really differently with my mark making. For me, it was also something that came into my technique, that I was challenged in a way that I couldn't really rely on the things that I knew. And I found that um, in this show and in the works that I produced, even some of the Hong Kong stuff, I think even the, the fact that we chose peaks and valleys also represents the skyscrapers and the up and down of Hong Kong where people are living up, up, up high but also down on the street. These valleys and, and summits that we were also doing out in China in these landscapes was a real contrast. So I it chose to include some Hong Kong works as well and the cityscapes because um, I sort of felt there was a, a bouncing off between... Uh, where we live and our landscape and our environment and I think to go from the busy hustle and bustle of Hong Kong and then two days later we're painting in the absolute tranquility of these beautiful peaks it was just so much that it came into my painting I tried to experiment a bit more I tried to do some different things it doesn't look like a completely normal show of mine but I like that because it's actually led on to other stuff which I'm working on back in my studio in Australia so the fact that you put together these residencies, you might not see exactly what it brings to people's work outside of the actual initial shows and then we present it to the public, but it does change people's way of working, which is a really wonderful thing. The Knock Art Foundation. Foundation. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> that sort of segues into the question, two questions I've asked our pen, which have come out in, I think, a short video that you've put together, but you're talking about the ancientness of the landscape and how that's resonated with you as a time traveller, but also this juxtaposition of city and Chinese landscape and the, and the tall peaks. Well, this trip uh, to Hong Kong and Huang Shan is very interesting for me. There is a very in interesting point I want to mention is distance. So when I was in China, living in China, I don't have a distance with all those you know, famous mountain sides and the famous Chinese artworks. So when, when I was living in China, I actually more interested in the Western masterpieces. But when we moved to Australia and about 10 years ago, I set a distance to my homeland. And then I, I realized I have a completely view you know, towards its history and culture. It's different because I'm stepping out. A lot of other matters has the same pattern. So when you're in the center, you, you, you're kind of not really knowing exactly what's happening around you. But when you have a distance and that you are able to uh, stand as an outsider's perspective, you understand more. So I took art history as my major when I studied in the Australian universities, Chinese art history. So I basically studied masters the, in the past in China and all of those Song Dynasty, Tang Dynasty, up towards the Mingqing landscapes. Steve just mentioned that uh, he got that sense of mm -hmm. where the masters got their inspiration. Is that something that really hit you with Wang Chen? Yeah, and it's completely different after I have studied them on the textbook in the world and on the catalogs. You felt that you after. were a time traveler. Yeah, that, that's right. And it also fits into uh, the serious painting I'm, I'm creating, which I really like the conversation and dialogue between different dimensions. And because I'm Chinese living in Australia, so I also like the comparison uh, parts between the Eastern and the Western cultures. So uh, it's a perfect trip for me. And that's why the works uh, I produced in my studio back in Australia, I'm bringing here to Hong Kong. 
uh, most of them I try to combine the mountain views and uh, what I feel for Hong Kong together. Yeah, that's what I like to do. Um, such as in the floating in my floating window ideas, I try. There's one behind you. Apparently. Yeah, there's one behind me. So there, there is Beijing. Right? Yeah, that's Beijing. There is a large, um, the, the, the the large view. It, it has a scenery or cityscape or a mountainscape, and in the window, um, through the window, there there either be a figure looking through the window or the audience of the painting itself. Mm -hmm. Is the one who is looking through the window or outside the window. There are different stories connecting them.